everybody today we are going to talk about the basics of coronary angiograms and the views that we use in the cath lab uh, i know it's going to be very basic for some of you but definitely going to help um, the first year fellows or the fellows uh, who already know it uh, may get some points out of it as well so we're going to start from the top right corner here um, basically we have to know how the ii the x-ray source and the c arm works so this is the c arm i'm just going to highlight that the x-ray source is uh, below the table and the ii or the image intensifier is the one that you know accepts or absorbs the radiation that comes from the x-ray beam right below the table so whenever we are talking about the images or the position of the image we t are talking about the image depending on where the ii or the image intensifier is not actually the x-ray source so if an ii is anteriorly um, then the x-ray source is below or posteriorly similarly if the ii goes to the right side the x-ray source will be on the left side so kind of you know makes sense in a way that although the beam is coming from an opposite direction but we are labeling the images in relation to the image intensifier where it is so this image intensifier can be moved to the right to the left so though if it is on the right we will have an image that will be labeled at the right if it is on the left the image will be labeled as left and if you move the ii towards the head of the patient it's going to be a cranial view and if you may move the ii towards the feet it will be a caudal view so just like a basic idea of how things work and how we label these now let's come to the to the orientation of the patient so if you look at this bottom right picture here i have labeled the different views so if the ii again this is the image intensifier if the image intensifier is on the right side of the patient and the cranial side it's in the view is going to be a rao cranial view if the image intensifier is on the left side and on a cranial side it's going to be a leo cranial view similarly is if the image intensifier is on the caudal side on the left it's going to leo caudal view and similarly the rao caudal view one thing you have to know again is that in the rao cranial view the image intensifier is on the right side but the x-ray source or where the radiations are coming will be in the opposite direction so x-ray beam will be in the lao caudal position when you are taking an rao cranial view this will be helpful in understanding the views when we will be talking about that so now we're going to move on the on the middle of the picture here where we have different views um, of the left system and then we'll briefly talk about the right system as well let's start with the rao cranial view and i'm just gonna make circles around these two cranial views and that is because one thing you have to know is that the cranial views are good for visualizing the led so just just keep this in mind whenever there is a cranial view the artery that's gonna be opened up and very obvious in the middle of the screen will be your led in this case i have made it in a red color so now comes what i was talking to you about was that radiation beam so imagine uh, as we were talking about rao cranial view we talked about that the x-ray beam is uh, in the lao caudal position so the beam is coming from below so what it will do is it will cross the diaphragm so you will see this diaphragm 
in the cranial view because the uh, X-ray beam is coming from the caudal direction although the image is a cranial view because the II is in the cranial position. So similarly in the LAO cranial view again you will see the, the diaphragm coming in the view as well. I will just label that as picture 2, this one and as, the, as 1. Similarly if you go to the caudal views the artery that's going to be more obvious will be your circumflex. You will be able to see the LED, but as I said, there will be overlap. It might be foreshortened. So the caudal views are good for visualizing the circumflex artery. So having said that, uh, now we are going to talk about how do we recognize where the arteries are in terms of of the views so the the easiest way is you will see on the let's say for example in picture one if you look you're looking at the angiogramic angiographic films on the top right corner you will see it's written as cranial lao so that's kind of your cheat sheet saying okay is it a cranial view or is it a caudal view and if it is a cranial view the artery that's going to be more obvious and opened up will be the LED. Similarly, as I said, if it is a caudal view, then the artery that will be more obvious will be the circumflex. We all make mistakes. And uh, the more you look at the angiograms, these four pictures should stick to your mind. The next time when you are looking at an angiogram, try to have a picture memory of these uh, arteries in relation to the view because that is important when we are doing a STEMI we we basically are looking what is missing so for example in image one if we do an RAO cranial view and we don't see something going down in the in the middle of the screen and we from our pictorial memory know there should be something going like in that direction and that's when we say okay this anterior STEMI LED similarly the other branches as well as circumflex um, when we don't see it we have a, a picture memory of okay this is the area where there should be an artery and if something missing then you know you start poking it with a wire so that's what I'm saying. It's very important that you have to have a picture memory of all these images. So in the RAO cranial view, as I said, you have you have an LED that is going down in the middle of the screen. I'll put them arrow. These are the diagonal branches, and the LED is nice and open. And on the right side, you will have these diagonal branches and the septal perforator on this side. Similarly, in the LAO cranial view, what's happening is now the LED is coming straight down. And this is important because it is the view which will open up the diagonals. So if you want to look at the osteal disease in the diagonal branches, this is the best view to look at it. The RAO cranial view is good for the body of the LED, but the diet might be hiding behind the LED, um, so you might miss an osteal lesion. Let's come to the caudal views now. We're going to come to image 3. I'm just going to label it. Here you have the left circumflex that comes down. Again, as I said, caudal views are good for the uh, circumflex. You will see an OM branches. OM1, OM2, and if it is a dominant system, it might give the PDA as well, PLV. Again, this view, the RAO caudal view, is good for looking at the body of the left circumflex. So here you again can see the LED, the proximal portion of the LED, but everything else is kind of no overlap. 
So the coral view, the RAO coral view is very nice to look at the OVM branches, any osteal disease, uh, any disease in the body of the left circumflex. Then we come to the image four, which is your LAO caudal view. Another name for that is the spider view. And the spider view is very good for looking at the left main. And it kind of nicely opens up the bifurcation. So if you have any kind of osteal LAD or circ disease, this is the best view to look at that. Diax will be around like two o'clock position and then the LED will go back and kind of come down. So in this view, the LED will be going away from you. Again, as we talked about, the cranial views are good for the LED, not the caudal view. Here you will see the circumflex kind of coming down. You can look at the OM branches as well. But for the most part, when we are doing a spider view or LAO caudal view, we are basically focusing more on the left main and the osteal LED and osteal cirque disease. Let's come to the image five and six, which is for the right coronary artery. Not much to discuss here. The LAO view to look at the RCA is good to look at the osteum of the RCA. You can see the conus branch here as well. The RV marginal branch opens up nicely. But clearly what in LAO view you are looking at the RCA is the body of the RCA, which opens up very nicely. So if you have a stenosis in the body of the RCA, this is a good view. And again, if you look at this distal portion, everything is kind of overlap. So not a very good view to look at the bifurcation PDA and PLV. And that is when you want to have the RAO view. So the RAO, RAO view will kind of will foreshorten the RCA, but it can have you look at the body of the RCA in a different from a different plane. But what it is very important and very helpful is to look at the bifurcation. It can nicely open up the bifurcation of the PDA and PLV. Uh, you can see all the branches nicely, which were kind of overlapping in the LAO view. So with this, we come to the last two images that we will be talking about, image seven and image eight. It's not basically an image, it's just like the anatomy uh, of the coronary arteries. Let's start with seven, which is left circumflex. So the proximal left circumflex, I will just label it as a P. The proximal left circumflex is the one before it gives the OM branch. And then the left circumflex kind of goes around. It might become a smaller vessel and continue in the AV groove as a left circumflex. So some people will call it as a true circ, which is small. Some will say, okay, no, this big OM is a, is a circ. Whatever you decide, just stick to it and, and when you are reporting it um, because sometimes the, the true AV groove circ might be very rudimentary and might not be of that significance. But again, proximal to the OM, the circumflex is known as a proximal circumflex. Now we come to the LED and it will be very important to know a few things in the LED that will help you uh, kind of understand or identify LED when you're looking at angiographic films. So the LED before the septal perforator, this one is the proximal LED. So that's the definition. First, once a septal comes off the LED, you are now getting into the mid LED. There's no clear definition of the distal LED. You can say two thirds of the you know, two third out of the LED, the last one third portion of the LED might be called as a uh, as a distal LED. How do you how do you uh, kind of recognize the LED? There are a few tricks. One is the septal perforators. In the coronary circulation, septal perforators are the only branches 
that come off at a 90 degree angle. So if you're looking at uh, angiographic films and you see these branches coming off a vessel at a 90 degree, that's probably looking at the LED. Again, if you look at these uh, diagonal branches, they come at an acute angle. So these are the diagonal branches, but for the septal, those are the only branches in the coronary circulation that come at um, a right angle of a big LED. And then the last but not the least they describe is the the way the LED you know splits near the apex. So if this is an apex, it splits in a mustache pattern. So they, they kind of de describe it. If you follow the LED near the apex, it will uh, in about 60 to 70 percent of the patients will split like a mustache. So those are kind of two or three hint that can give you a clue if you are not entirely sure about which one is the left circumflex or which one is the LED. I hope this was helpful um, and have a good day.